The average age of entry into prostitution is 13. I shouldn't know about a lot of the things I know about. It is a brainwashing process. I make sure she has what she needs. Housing, car, jewelry. It's been getting worse. They're subject to violence. He got beat up, thrown through windows, chased around with sledgehammers. You're not going to get out this business. You're mine forever. You belong to me. Dear Mom and Dad, I want you to know that it wasn't supposed to end up like this. I don't know where I thought I was headed or, or what I was going to do when I left, but it wasn't this. Now, I just want the pen to quit. I want to crawl into a deep, dark hole and, and never come out. That's why I'm writing. Usually people run away for a reason. Um, a lot of girls aren't running just for the sake of running. In the cases I've handled, I have had girls run away because there's sexual abuse going on in the home, either by maybe a biological father, a stepfather, physical abuse, drug use in the home, emotional abuse, they're getting yelled at all the time. There's usually some reason why a child runs. My family was going through a lot of hardships and everything, and. I wasn't, it wasn't a good relationship, and so I ran away, and then I just started to know people on the streets. You can have girls from Scottsdale with a, a nice family background, you know. Some just do it to make their family mad. Some just tired of being with their family. You know, they probably want to live on the wild side. It ranges all over from serious bad drug addicts, or you came from a bad family. Yeah, you, you're quicker to get into it, but it's just the same as if you came from a good family. Uh, been getting worse. The average age of entry into prostitution is 13. When I first started investigating vice issues seven years ago, the average age of entry into prostitution was 15. The age is dropping and we expect to see it even go lower before we're done. The youngest I've seen out there was probably about 13, 14. I've seen a, a nice handful of younger girls out there. I shouldn't know about sex. I'm only 16. I shouldn't know about a lot of the things I know about. The sexualization is becoming more normalized. Younger people are exposed to more sexual activities. It's just become to the point where it's acceptable to become involved in sex at a younger age. So with the age dropping down for people to become sexually active, it follows that we're going to be seeing people involved in prostitution at a younger age. I really thought he loved me. I met him at the mall after I ran away the second time. Remember our last fight? You said I looked like a tramp, that no self-respecting 15-year-old would ever dress or act the way I did. Then I met him, and he said I was special. The malls, if not the malls, you know, if I'm driving down the street or something, and say it's late, six, seven o'clock, you know, past the time you usually get out of school, I look for a younger female, you know, a younger female with a backpack or something because the first thing I'm going to think is, okay, she, she's leaving home. She's leaving home for a reason. More than likely, she just got, got into it with her parents and she decides she wants to run away from home. When I first met him, he was really nice. He was really sweet. He was really funny. He was tall. He wasn't fat. He was slender. You know, he looked normal. I would ask a woman out to dinner, try to spend some time with her. And while while we are at dinner or, you know, at dinner at the movies or even walking through the mall, you know, I finally tell her what I do. You know, it's either she like it or she doesn't. But after I spend so much money on her, hey, well, she likes she likes having money spent on her. She likes having money. She likes the finer things in life like everybody. It's all materialistic, but of course, who doesn't want it? Spend a certain amount of money on her, then, you know, I tell her, hey, you can, you can have everything I have, man. All you got to do is be willing to do it, you know? And, Maybe I'll start by, by first I try to make her whole for me, and if not, you know, I try to put her into a strip club, all the way to escort services. Pimps make contacts with victims in lots of different ways. We've heard a lot lately, kind of on the news, about different malls. We've heard um, what's called like the rule of three in prostitution recruitment. If you approach a girl and she's with two of her friends, 
basically how they select which one they're going to groom to work as a prostitute for them. They're never going to go for the most attractive girl because the attractive girl is the one who's used to getting lots of attention. They won't target the least attractive girl of the three because that girl might wonder why the guy is going after the least attractive girl of the three. So they'll often target the girl in the middle because she'll think something special of the fact that the really, really pretty girl is not getting contacted and she'll think that there's something in particular that this guy sees in her and normally um, there's other insecurities that the pimps are able to pick up on. Most of the women, you know, they, they want to be loved, so I make sure she has what she needs, personal hygiene. You take her, get her nails done, take her to buy an outfit. From housing to cars to jewelry, all the expensive stuff they really can't afford, taking them to a nice concert, treating them better than they were being treated in the beginning. Make her feel wanted, you know, but I don't give her any money. If they try to leave, then you know you got to threaten them, you know they're going to get their family involved. Or, well, you're not going to get out of this business, you know, you're, you're mine forever, you belong to me. Next thing you know, you know, she tries to run off or something and winds up with a bullet in her head or winds up off the side of the road somewhere, you know, in a ditch or something. At first, I really loved him, and he told me he loved me. He said I was smart and pretty. He was going to make me a big star. He took photos, headshots, and everything. He said I'd be famous. And I believed him from the bottom of my heart. I believed him because he was so cool and so good to me. We did fun things. He showed me what it was like to be treated well. He had a lot of money, nice clothes, jewelry, and a real fancy car. I was so happy to be with someone who really cared. And then suddenly he was mean hateful and evil. He screamed at me, and he hit me, and he really hurt me. And when I tried to run, he threw me in the car and took me away. I ended up in a place that was hot and dirty, and then I really hated him. But I didn't have anywhere to go. The place I stayed had three other girls working on the street. They had four crackheads living there. It was a one bedroom apartment, one bathroom, and it had the living room and kitchen combined. I hated being there at the time. If I could be anywhere else, I would have been. It was very filthy. The air conditioning didn't work. There was cockroaches crawling up and down the walls. There was rotten food everywhere. You can't believe the things he made me do, Mama. The things I did all by myself. I started hating him something fierce. But worse than that, I started to hate myself even more than I hated him. I wasn't a star. I was a criminal and I couldn't get away. But even if I could have run, I, I didn't know where to run to. In this prostitution culture, lifestyle is commonly referred to as the game. And it's, it's its own unique culture, it's got its own set of terminology, and it is a brainwashing process because these girls are given rules by these pimps that they need to follow. Um, they're told the money always goes to the pimp. They're told if you're underage that you never give up the pimp and you never tell them how old you are. They're told that you always walk with your head down, you don't make eye contact with any other pimps, you don't in, get in the car with people who you think might be pimps. Like an average day, you know, we'll probably go out there by like 6 to 12. If we go at like 8.30, you know, we'll stay there till 2. Or I would drop them off and I'll, I'll probably go to a bar, or, you know, I'll go to a strip club, have me a few drinks or something, just relax, you know. Pretty much when you talk to these girls, none of them like the prostitution part of it. You ask them, well, how did you feel when you were out there jumping in the car with these strange guys? And they hate it. But they're so brainwashed into thinking that they're doing something good for themselves or for the pimp that they just, when they're in the middle of the act, just block it out of there. But now, the worst is the pain. You can't believe how bad I hurt now. It's horrible.
horrible. In the beginning, it wasn't all that bad. If I just made my brain go dead. Then I got into some trouble because walking the street is hard and the people are mean. Well, all the girls that turned down a trick, they got beat up. They got chased around with sledgehammers, thrown through windows, thrown through doors. It wasn't too pretty. I know there was times where I did whatever I was going to do with this person, and he pulled a knife out on me. And he wouldn't pay me. He wouldn't nothing. And I was kind of left stranded and everything. And he just took me out, and he just dumped me like in the middle of the street. I watched a girl get pistol whipped, you know, beat, beat with the butt of a gun. Watched a girl get choked out. I've seen the worst of it, you know. I, I watched uh, a pimp put a, put a female in his trunk. She could be breaking the rules. She could not be doing it right. Like, okay, it's been times like, um, like a female would try to hold back money from him, you know, and that'll make him beat her. Or if the female's not applying herself, you know, she's not putting herself out there to be sold, you know, if she's just walking up and down the street but not doing nothing at all, or she's been out there two hours and hasn't caught one trick, you know, that that, that makes any pimp angry, man. And it's been times like, okay, if she doesn't do something right or if she don't bring back enough money, you know, all, all that's cost for, you know, a pimp to get real aggressive and they're called like so-called gorilla pimps. In a lot of my cases, I've seen girls who have been out there working, been affected by what they're doing physically because they've been sexually assaulted while they're out there. There's lots of guys who will pick up girls and do what they want to do with them and throw them out of the car, um, hit them, not pay them call them names so they're affected like that physically. And most of the times, the pimps, a lot of them are having sex with the girls themselves. They're either raping the girls or engaging in what the girls consider to be consensual, but obviously, if they're underage, they don't have the capacity to consent. But Daddy, I'm tough. I really am. Lately, I've been real hurt and sick inside. I started taking these pills he gave me. They helped for a while, but they don't seem to help anymore. I want to go see someone, but he won't let me. He tells me I'll get better, but I know I won't. I don't feel so good. I did crack cocaine. I'm a very shy person, and I don't like asking for things. And so the drugs made it easier to ask for money or made it easier to rip people off or be more braver. There are some pimps who don't mind if the girls that are working for them use drugs because they say that it keeps them up longer, they're able to work longer, they're able to make more money. They'll provide them with drugs, they'll let them do drugs because they can go kind of like, you know, if you're on stimulants like the Energizer Bunny, you know, you can go all night. And then for some girls who have a little bit of a harder time engaging in the sex acts themselves, being high on drugs helps them get through those experiences. Some of the things that I've seen on prostitutes in general and, and child prostitutes, uh, young women, it seems like prostitution and drug use sort of go hand in hand. So it's not that unusual for me to see track marks on the arm, tattoos, and the tattoos can be a sign of a statement. More than usual, though, they are to hide the track marks. One of the things that I usually see, though, is what is called emaciation. Emaciation is most of these women are not in the best of shape. Now, that can be because of some sort of disease that they acquired while they are prostituting themselves. These venereal type of diseases uh, causing uh, the person to become first immunosuppressed and then start losing weight. Uh, so they do look uh, quite emaciated because of that. I've been pregnant about five times. Three times I, I know who three of them were. The other two I don't know when and it, it's just I didn't have a condom at the time and I couldn't stop and get one. I've gotten STDs 
on the street, and now I have two STDs that I'm going to keep for the rest of my life. I know that you guys have problems. It always kills me to see you fight, and, and I also don't like some of the things you say to me. But no matter how bad it gets at home, I would rather be there than here. I miss my bed. I miss my friends. I miss you. And I really miss Richie. Can you say hey to him for me? Tell him that his big sister is okay. That she's coming home and that everything's gonna be okay. I really think I can do that. Because I, I've heard about a couple girls who've gotten out. Things can go back to the way they were, can't they? You know, unfortunately, at this point, I haven't seen too many girls who have completely gotten out of it. The problem with this particular group is that they are so transient. People that you've seen on the street, people you've had contact with, that you've seen for a couple of weeks, three weeks, months, all of a sudden they're not there anymore. If one of my girls wanted to get out the business, you know, I'd personally, like, wind up, you know, kissing ass, you know, try to keep her with me, you know, and. I do everything it takes until I have to cuss her out, you know, well, you, you want to leave, you know, well, make me this much money, you know, when you can go about your business. But then again, like, in the business, you know, it's, okay, usually broads, they'll try to run away, and then uh, pimps will know where they live or where their family lives, you know, and be right there waiting on them, or, you know, they'll get their family involved, or, you know, if she wants to get out the business, you know, try to beat her or kidnap her, take her to another state to where she can't come back home, you know? But I guess you're probably still pretty mad at me, right? You're probably glad to not have to deal with my attitude and stuff. If I told you that I would change, if I said I was sorry for all the trouble, would it be all right for me to come home? For a little while, at least? They've all got their sad aspects. People looking to go home, people that got into it not knowing what was coming their way, uh, girls that were sold the big lie and they started out thinking that this was going to be their career. This is going to leverage them into some kind of big money and success. And then they, they're just never seen again. About three years ago, my cousin, you know, she was out in Tennessee, but I knew she was on. And supposedly, she, she got hit by a train. But you know, like I was telling my family, you know, I kind of think she was pushed. We had one girl that was arrested for prostitution in Phoenix. She was from Riverside, California. Uh, she was arrested here. She went back home, got back into the life, and was murdered in Riverside. I'm really scared now. And I don't want to be here for one more minute, so can I please come home? Love, Sarah. These bodies that come into the medical examiner's office that are, are that type, essentially they are isolated during life and even after death we isolate them by putting them into the high risk room. An underage prostitute, depending upon what the circumstances are, uh, this would naturally be given a, a red uh, number that signifies that she uh, died tragically, uh, perhaps at the hands of another, which is essentially uh, termed a homicide. Then by me having that case, I would look at the chart, see what the police are assuming, my investigators what they're assuming, and then decide on, based on this, if I consider her to be a high risk either due to communicable diseases or the fact that she is is decomposed. But it wasn't supposed to end up like this. I really thought he loved me. He was, was going to make me big star, big star, big star. The arguments I squash, cause I don't wanna cry I get overwhelmed by the hurt, sometimes I wanna die I don't show them my pain, cause I don't want them to know But if you look into my eyes, they're the windows to my soul 
I change directions when they speak in my way. Sometimes the words feel like bullets, AKs over gauge. I don't know how to persuade. It's hopeless to me. It's not like I can stop these people from doing the dirty deeds. So try to change the facts, but it's hard to say how. When I indulge in a reference, people treat me so fast. It's like I was born with a sign of stupidity on my head. But when I look inside, these people, all the souls are so dead. They keep on searching, trying to find me till the end. Break down one time, trying to force it till it's rough. Insult my intelligence, they think my brain is mush. Cause they don't know the meaning of the liberty that stands. They hope and think it's mutual, but they don't know the trend. Ensure the resources, they trying to get the young ones. I brought it to a halt, they don't know what's going on. How did I defeat the odds? What I do to get there? Are monkeys on the back? Expressions like a big snare. Destination, I'm determined. Always focus, listen, learn, and dominate the facts of life. Try to find new ways of earning. Out on my own. I'm on my own. I can't take this no more. No more. No more. You damage my soul. Can't take this no more.